What up, Gotham Guardians and Arkham Adversaries? It's your boy Train as Wonder Wife, Sarah. We just got back from the theaters checking out the new Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny movie. This was our 1.5 time watching it. We, we had a bit of an interesting AMC theater experience when we tried to see it Thursday. Yesterday, night. they had a lot of technical difficulties. A lot of And technicals. we were over it. Yeah, it, it, the, the, basically they were saying power surges nonstop and the movie started and it was just audio and it played for like seven minutes and then they... Then the picture came on and then we watched another and, five minutes into the movie and it was rough. Yeah, and then they rewind and it just ha kept happening throughout the entire film. So we decided to leave about an hour in because it was just, it was killing my experience for this movie because as being a huge Indiana Jones fan, I just couldn't handle it anymore. Yeah. So we left. Luckily, we were able to get tickets for the next day at a different theater and everything went swimmingly. Now, this is going to be a spoiler free review. So if you haven't checked out the film yet, no worries, we're not gonna ruin anything for you. Sarah, what was your general thoughts about the story of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? I think the story had a lot of potential. They didn't do it very well. Yeah, essentially the, the premise is, is the main storyline takes place in 1969 and Indiana Jones is basically accompanied by his goddaughter who is, is a bit of a shady character and it's basically a race against time for a dude who was a former Nazi who works with NASA. He His goal is basically to change the past with this legendary artifact and that's kind of the whole premise behind this movie. I agree with you. It had a ton of potential but it lacked lacked the magic, the nos I mean, there is nostalgic moments, but they're just... They're just trying, I feel like they were trying too hard. It was forced. Yeah. A lot of forced nostalgia. I gotta say, I'm a little surprised of what they did with certain characters like Indiana Jones. It was a good thing probably that we watched that first hour and then went to go see it the full movie today because it kind of prepared me because it, it really caught me off guard with Anna Jones. I'm torn about it, really. Right, like, so where he's at in his life, his mentality totally makes sense. And then it just yeah. like flips and you're like, what the hell? Yeah, th there was a lot of plot points that I felt like they didn't quite close the loop on. When you think about it, this is Indiana Jones' final adventure and I'm not sure if it, it leaves you in a place where you're like, oh, that's a that's a great ending to this iconic cinematic character. Where were some of the characters that stood out for you for this movie? I mean Sala. He just brings it brings you back. Which is not a spoiler because you saw him in the trailers, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean seeing him, that was a nostalgic moment there. Where, like it warmed your heart. It kind of happens quick, and he doesn't really have a, a role in this other than he pops up, pops out, you know. Yeah, I would say the the villain in this movie, Mads Mikkelsen, they picked the perfect actor for the perfect character, but they didn't do his storyline wasn't well. It wasn't good. Yeah, his his motive is interesting, and I mean it's Mad Mickelson who plays I mean, he's always a great villain. He wasn't the iconic, comical villain that we've seen in Indiana Jones films before, where they kind of have that James Bond fictional, larger-than-life right. aspect to them. He's kind of just normal. Yep. Kind of there. <laughs> yeah, he, he's yep. just a, a normal villain with an interesting motive, whether it works or not. What was your thoughts about the female lead, Helena? I didn't like her. I didn't like her either. I didn't like the character. Yeah, she felt so forced to me. Best way I can put it without spoiling anything. It was like they tried to make someone who was like Indiana Jones, but had different morals. It was very hard to root for her. Yeah, there was a certain point in the movie where it just kind of solidified, you know, nail in the coffin for me. Her whole motive through the scene is, I, I can't root for you. Yeah. I can't go for that. I would love to hear what you guys think about her character, especially. To me, she was kind of very similar to like Rey Skywalker in the, the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. Now, quick pros and cons of the movie. They do tip their hat a lot to the old movies. I did like that. Yeah. Um, the humor in the movie was nicely placed. The action scenes, I think, could have been done better, but they weren't totally lackluster for me. The acting in the movie was good. The, but again, I think, you know, we, we've a lot of these movies that we've seen lately, the, the, the storyline for those characters just falls short. Yeah, it definitely falls short in quite a few areas. One, one place where it weirdly didn't work for me was John Williams. This is his last film and as someone who's like really big into music and it's such an iconic score yeah there was like so much like empty space 
like where there there was like minutes where there was no music and I was kind of like this doesn't feel like John Williams and mm -hmm. I guess that was kind of the thing I noticed we did so many watch parties leading up to this movie that you really get the sense you have of, an expectation of what's to come in this movie and not only that just like style of how they you know the Indiana Jones shadow the iconic shadow that they do and just certain ways the camera is shot to make these characters larger than life and very adventurous and full of wonder and magical in a sense right. it didn't do that for me in this movie it was just kind of a lackluster adventure really so that's kind of my general thoughts interesting to see where it places in the franchise mm -hmm. sarah if you had to give it a rating what would you give it i'd probably give it probably about a seven one a seven one okay for me what i would score it you're gonna have to wait for our spoiler <laughs> discussion because I have a lot to say about this movie. When Super Bro Corey is finally gonna be able to watch it, we'll then discuss it, really break it down with what we liked, what we didn't like. If it was a perfect riding off to the sunset ending for the iconic character that Harrison Ford has just solidified in cinema history, we'll talk about that. Uh, but definitely leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys thought of the movie. Uh, if where it ranks maybe in the franchise for you, would definitely love to hear your guys' thoughts. But thank you so much for hanging out with us. <laughs> Make sure to smash that like, share this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. I'm your host, Trey, with his wonder wife, Sarah. And don't forget to tune in weekly. Same bad time. Same bad channel.